Hello, I'm Roisin Hasty with the BBC News. Israel says its army has completely encircled Gaza City and that the height of the battle has been reached. The military says it's in close combat with Hamas fighters. From Jerusalem, here's John Donison. The ground operation is advancing. They are facing resistance. Uh, we've seen 19 Israeli soldiers uh, now killed. And it has to be said that the area on the approach to Gaza City is relatively open. You know, there are small towns and villages which are maybe easier to move through. Once you get to the densely built up urban area of Gaza City itself, it's going to be increasingly difficult and complex, of course. A group of UN-mandated human rights experts have said that the Palestinian people are at grave risk of genocide. They called on Israel to stop its attack. Israel accused the UN experts of repeating Hamas propaganda. The UN Agency for Palestinians, meanwhile, said 20 people had reportedly been killed when a UN school sheltering displaced people was damaged after heavy bombardments. President Biden says more than 70 American passport holders were among the dozens of foreign nationals able to leave Gaza through the Rafah crossing on Thursday. It's not yet known whether more seriously ill and wounded Palestinians were again evacuated after the border gates were opened. The U.S. House of Representatives has voted in favour of sending more than $14 billion of security aid to Israel. But the Republican-controlled chamber separated the funding from a wider bill linking it with assistance to Ukraine, meaning the legislation is unlikely to pass in the Senate. From Washington, here's Gary O'Donoghue. House Republicans, led by their new speaker, Mike Johnson, are increasingly sceptical about sending money to Ukraine, which is why they are trying to separate it from money for Israel. The problem is that a number of Republicans in the Senate do not agree with them, so the chances of this plan passing the Senate, which it has to to become law, are close to nil. Joe Biden has also said he'd veto such a plan if it reached his desk. Sam Bankman-Fried, who once ran one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, FTX, has been found guilty of fraud and money laundering. A Manhattan jury convicted him on seven counts, including two of fraud and five of conspiracy. Ellen Delmore reports. For years, Sam Bankman-Fried touted his FTX crypto exchange as the safe and easy way to get into cryptocurrencies, enticing customers with the chance to make big returns in a realm many regarded with skepticism. Few made it bigger than him. At one point, he amassed a net worth of $26 billion. But the fortune, the business, the image were built on a lie. The great success story was in fact a great fraud. BBC News. Relatives of the jailed Iranian rights activist and Nobel Peace Prize winner Nargis Mohammadi say she's being denied urgently needed medical treatment for refusing to wear a hijab. They say Miss Mohammadi is suffering from heart and lung conditions but has been refused a hospital transfer unless she puts on the headscarf which is compulsory for women in public places in Iran. The tech billionaire Elon Musk has said the rise of artificial intelligence means there will come a time when no job is needed and that one one future challenge for humanity would be how to find meaning in life. In a public event in London with Britain's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, Mr Musk likened the technology to a genie able to do anything. But he also warned of humanoid robots that in his words could chase you anywhere and might turn against us. There will come a point where no job is needed. You can have a job if you want to have a job for sort of personal satisfaction, but the AI will be able to do everything. So I don't know if that makes people comfortable or uncomfortable. A former gang member charged in connection with the death of the rapper Tupac Shakur has pleaded not guilty to murder in a court in Las Vegas. 60-year-old Dwayne Davis, who's known as Kefidi, was arrested in September in connection with the long unsolved murder. Prosecutors allege he orchestrated the shooting after his nephew was beaten up by Tupac and members of his entourage. The US Treasury Department has sanctioned 130 individuals and companies in Turkey, China and the United Arab Emirates as it continues to target Russia's military supply chain. The the Treasury Secretary said Moscow was dependent on them to perpetuate what she described as its heinous war against Ukraine. That's the latest world news on the BBC.